The story of Baby Roger begins with the story of his home, Roger Williams Park in Providence, Rhode Island. The love that Betsy Williams bore, the city her great ancestor founded, and her reverence for his memory prompted this bequest, by which she provided that this tract of land might be forever kept as a public park and be known as Roger Williams Park. It quickly becomes a refuge from the city for all classes of society, from sweatshop children to wealthy business owners. It is truly a democratic playground. The menagerie, though primitive by today's standards, is considered to be one of the most humane in the nation. It is the high spot of any visit. Most of the animals are donated by the civic-minded public. Is not a large but an excellent one. The magnificent lion, Palm, is monarch with his mate making a regal pair. The leopards, bears, the monkeys, Rachel the camel, and the birds all receive great attention. A portion of the main corridor of the menagerie at Roger Williams Park has been roped off temporarily and the farther end set apart as a nursery for an oriental infant of mastodonic proportions, which arrived from New York yesterday morning. He is loaned to the menagerie by one William A. Conklin, an exotic animal dealer known for his shady past. He was fired from New York City's Central Park Zoo for loaning out the zoo's animals to Broadway shows and boarding his friend's animals at the park's barns. The elephant is named Baby Roger Williams. Providence Journal, March 27, 1893. The elephant is the particular pet of the menagerie and is the most potent attraction at present in the park. There is more genuine fun in the elephant than in all the others, and his diminutive stature enhances his attractiveness. I cannot leave the baby elephant with you permanently, as I must cover my own expenses. Therefore, I must ask the city to reimburse me $1,500 for him, if they want him to stay. Voted that the city does not have the budget to purchase an elephant for Roger Williams Park Menagerie. It isn't just hard-heartedness that causes them to turn Roger's ransom down. The stock market is crashing. The panic of 1893 is on. The children, of course, don't understand. Providence Journal, March 28, 1893. It was positively cruel on the part of the men responsible to bring that baby elephant to the Roger Williams Park and then announce to the children of the city that he wouldn't be allowed to stay as far as the city council is concerned, the public may get along with two ring-tailed monkeys and a buffalo with a beard like an anarchist. But this is the progressive era. Women march for the right to vote. Citizens toss out corrupt machines. Cities are made beautiful. The public is powerful and they are determined to have their way. In Providence, a heroine emerges. To the editor of the journal, I noticed in your last Monday's issue the item regarding the elephant recently arrived at the park. It stated that the sum of $1,500 will be needed to secure him. It has occurred to me that the school children might raise the amount needed. If some such plan could be carried out, it would not be long ere the $1,500 would be secured. What a source of pride and pleasure it would be to the children to be able to say, 
We bought Roger. Signed, Mrs. W. H. T. The idea catches fire. Ten-year-old master John Knowles kicks off the campaign with 25 cents. He is followed quickly by others who smash their piggy banks and run magic lantern shows. Penny subscriptions are the order of the day, and we predict that baby Roger will remain. The children donate their poems, as well as their pennies, to save their beloved baby Roger. I saw a baby elephant at Roger Williams Park. He has a little coat on him, like the one in Noah's Ark. Roger, precious Roger, unless we do agree, soon to pay for the stay, all the fee ask for thee, thou must go from our show, O oh, sweetheart shall we part. May the money round you spread, like butter on hot gingerbread, so stay a while with us now do, and all my money I'll give to you. We truly want to buy him, but they ask an awful price, fifteen hundred dollars, but then he's awful nice. Take this lot of battered coin. I wish that it were better. But it's all I have, I'm sorry to say. So I enclose it in this letter. Over 2,300 children have donated to the fund. Dear sir, I beg to acknowledge the receipt of $1,500 received from you on behalf of the children of Providence and adjoining towns in payment for the baby elephant Raja. I think he will repay the interest taken in him by becoming a great pet. Thanking you for your kindness in this matter, I am very respectfully yours, W.A. Conklin. The children are heroes. The citizens have won. The handover takes place on Arbor Day, May 6th. Over 30,000 people attend the dedication ceremony. On behalf of the children in Providence, I herewith present to you the title to our beloved baby elephant, Roger. We give him to you to care for when we are not around. Treat him kindly for our sake. Give him plenty to eat and a good place to sleep. We ask nothing more. A Baby Roger Memorial is proposed for the park. Roger, the special friend of the children, is a rapidly growing fellow and can be seen on the green at most times surrounded by an amused group of little folks. Nineteen hundred. Arthur Martin, a Long Island filmmaker, comes to Providence after finishing his movie, A Unique Race, for the New York Sun. He films A Visit to Baby Roger. Roger was everybody's friend for a while, but he became terribly dissatisfied with his lot in general and disgusted with small boys in particular after one of them had fed him a bundle of fish hooks. Fall River Times, October 24th, 1902. Baby Roger has a dislike for a policeman's uniform. Sergeant Potter of the police department was strolling through the park one night when he saw baby Roger looming up by the lake shore. Roger jerked up his head with a snort, discerned by the moonlight the sergeant's brass buttons, and started after him. Up through the trees he dodged, the elephant crashing along behind him. Baby Roger, who had grown to be a pretty large baby during his ten years of life at the park, was sold early in the year, as he had shown symptoms of developing viciousness. Providence Journal, May 26th, 1903. There were few spectators of the loading, as because of the uncertain temper of the beast, it was decided best not to have the time of his departure too generally known.